to this time I'm going to be making a box trailer out of our old camping trailer so this is a kind of an upcycle deal we have an old Erdy 122 trailer that we used to use for camping and now I use it for taking rubbish up the tip of which we have loads now you can get hard tops for these trailers and extra sides but they don't quite give me enough room so our poor old trailer which is probably 13 years old, 14 years old now, is going to get a revamp. My idea is to put a box frame on top of the existing trailer without adding too much weight. So in SketchUp, that's the base of the old trailer, and I designed a angle iron frame that will fit over the top. Make it into a box without ex protruding too much and then I'm going to clad the sides with no I'm not I'm going to put a base in it first the computer's cleverer than I am and a ramp on the back and then I'm going to add some sides on it with some aluminium and make a nice shiny trailer first part of this is to cut all of the angle line to length but again this is not a step by step how to video this is a record of how I built my trailer and my idea of how I did it it may not be the best I'm sure it isn't um, but it might give you some ideas as to different ways you can do things so once the angle lines all cut to length and then made one base frame um, as square as possible yes it's a rectangle um, to get the square edges I used a piece of scrap plywood with a square edge on it square corner on it and then clamped the angle iron pieces to that and then welded it whilst it was clamped to the wood and that will hold it square do that four times and you get a base so you get on the trailer and make sure that it is what you thought it was and the computer said it was going to look like With that bottom frame all completed, I then clamped the pieces for the top frame to the bottom frame. And that holds them in place, keeps them square. Uh, some spacers made from some scrap bits of wood, all the same size, preferably. And then you can clamp them and you've not got to do the square trick with a piece of plywood again. Shed's looking a bit of a mess, as you can see. It's been a long time since the last video, um, but I don't need to apologise for that because I have personally written to my two subscribers and apologised through the post. So, we'll do some more welding. Now here you can see the two pieces clamped together with a spacer block in between and me getting a square out just to stop it getting dusty. You can also see here how the mitres are cut in the corners to allow the upright to fit in and give you a nice clean corner. And that's how you join three pieces of angle line together. There's plenty of videos online how to do that. At the other end, at the ramp end, I welded in a box section across to give me something a bit more substantial to fix my hinges to and fittings to. Once both frames are completed and you've ground all the monkey snot off, you need to um, put the uprights up, obviously. And the way I did this was by inserting the upright into the base, clamping a couple of bits of just um, scrap to either side of supports, and that then allowed me to alter the supports and move the upright until it was 
vertical before doing my final weld. So an initial tack weld, and then you can see I've got the square out again because I'm showing off, and move the upright until it's square, and then do your other welds just to hold it in place. And then once you've done that four times, you can simply lift the upper frame and balance it on top. I used four clamps clamped across the uprights to stop the upper frame crashing down to the ground. Oh gravity thou art a heartless bitch. And there we have it, a finished basic frame. The measurements actually panned out exactly as I wanted them, more by luck than judgment, I would say. Um, but that gives me a six foot trailer by four foot high by whatever it was wide. And then I inserted some stiffeners to stiffen the sides and the top and some web pieces to support the structure, making sure it was square before I welded those in place. They were fun to cut out. of welding and grinding later and we've got a slightly stiffer frame which is always good when you're my age so anybody that's seen a box trailer with a ramp on it will know that they have steadies two poles that come down at the back so that when you stand on the back without the trailer attached to your car it stops you catapulting the wife across the other side of the field so I took some time and made some nice plates to weld into my fillets to fix my studies to. Now the ramp was made in the same way as the rest of the frame by welding up a little box frame and putting some fillets in to stiffen it up a bit and then fitting some hinges on the bottom but I didn't bore you with the construction of it but I will bore you with me operating it about 10 times because I was quite pleased with myself as it is such a perfect fit The other clever little bit is I've reused the half barrel hinges from the original trailer to make the ramp detachable.
enough with the showing off. Now it's time to get this thing out of the shed and dry fit onto the trailer bed. Under normal circumstances you would take it out of your garage and put it onto your trailer bed. However, I make stuff in my shed. My shed's at the end of the garden. And some idiot built a lean-to down the side of our house and my back passage is now blocked. So this is a short little show of my son and I even this frame, which isn't heavy, just awkward, like my son, over the top of the house. Thankfully, we only did this twice. Once for the dry fit and then once for the final fit. But that was enough. Enjoy. By Jove it fits. There we have it, fit, dry fitted on the trailer. Now you'll see I've welded some angle irons across the front and the back of the original trailer bed which stops the frame moving backwards and forwards but it'll also be bolted to the trailer bed as well. And obviously Lottie had to inspect it and she inspected my welds and she was hypercritical. Lottie. Let's just leave it at that. So after lugging the frame back over the roof into the shed, wiping it down with some thinners, painting it two coats and then lugging it back again, I then put the aluminium siding on. Now this aluminium siding is used for display boards and advertising and it is an aluminium sandwich with plastic in the middle. But it makes for a very good finish and this was riveted onto the aluminium frame. So I held it in place and then just riveted straight, drilled it all riveted straight through the aluminium and into the frame behind. Um, it makes for a nice finish. Once all the aluminium siding was in place, I then glued aluminium angle over the corners to give that final finishing touch. Got a piece of 12mm ply to size, fitted that in the base, and painted that both sides, and then again glued that down into the bottom and bolted through it, and reused the back end of the trailer with the number plate and the lights to give a final finish, which I'm quite pleased with. I've already used the trailer a couple of times now, um, carried motorbikes in the back of it, which makes the detachable ramp very useful and it rides quite well behind the car, I'm pleased with it. The total cost of all the bits was probably somewhere around about £400, not including the original cost of the trailer, but it was a recycling project, don't forget. A box trailer like this, to buy one, is the best part of £2,000, so I think this is quite a bargain. And it looks smart as well. Tie-downs fixed in the base and the sides, just so that I've got places to hook me straps to and there you go jobs are good see you next time <laughs>